In this video, we're going to do the letter S. And let me zoom in here so we can get a good look at it. It doesn't matter whether you use the uppercase or lowercase. You'll be able to change the scale of it to match whatever you want. The only thing you need to remember is that the lowercase s proportionally should be a little bit thicker than the uppercase s. And also, as you, if you take a look at it, you can tell that the lowercase s proportionally is squattier too, so it's not as elongated for the uppercase. Anyway, uh, first thing I want to do is I want to copy the letter s that I'm actually going to be using for my modifications. And the s that's left behind, I want to convert that into a guide. So I'll go to the View drop-down menu, slide down to Guides, and select Make Guides. Or do a Control if you're on a PC, Command if you're on a Mac, 5. And now I'm going to do a Paste in Place. So I'll go to the Edit drop-down menu and select Paste in Place. Or do a Shift, Command if you're on a Mac, or Control if you're on a PC, and the letter V. And so that puts it right where it got copied from. If you just do a regular paste, it puts it right in the middle of the screen. And I wanted the registration to say the same, so that's where I put it. OK, so now in order for me to be able to see what I'm doing, I'm going to select only the letter S. And I'm going to flip the fill to the stroke. So now the stroke is black. I'll do a command on a Mac, Control if you're on a PC, F10, get up my stroke dialog window here, and I'm going to give it just one point just so that I can see it. OK, so I'm going to grab my direct selection tool, and I'm going to click on nothing, and I'll zoom in even a little bit closer. Uh, it, fun fact, if you do a command Y and you use the magnifying glass tool, you can draw the, still draw the little rectangle and zoom into what you want to see that way. OK, so what I want to do is I want to get rid of this stroke over here. And the, the stroke that I do see there, not just the black stroke, but that blue, that's from the guide. So I'm going to click and drag across that stroke, the top horizontal stroke, and I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom. So ideally, you would do this with the Blend tool, but there's still a couple more steps that we have to do. Otherwise, it ends up looking kind of bad. The uh, shortcut key for the Blend tool in Adobe is W. I'll select that right now. And this is going to be bad. And wait until you roll over and you see that black little dot. And then roll over, wait for the little black dot. And then voila, it's done. And it looks bad. So let me do an undo. And let's figure out what the trick is. The trick is to slice this into four quadrants on top and bottom and one in the middle. And then you'll be able to slice these sections individually. So I'm going to grab my scissors tool. And if I type in C on my keyboard, it'll go right to it, which is already here. And so I'm going to slice here, Hit do a select all. I'm going to put a slice on that point. I'm selecting right on the points. I want the points to be sliced. And now I'll go 90 degrees counterclockwise. And I'll go to this point over here. I'll do the same thing here on the bottom, 90 degrees there, there, and now on the bottom. So you got to do a select all so you can find the point. Now I'll go back to my direct selection tool. Now you'll be able to see if I click this upper left-hand corner, only the points on that upper left-hand corner light up. The other ones are off. If I click on these over here, only these light up. If I click in the middle points, only the middle part of the stem lights up. This side is only this left-hand corner, and then this one is this left-hand corner. That's what you want. OK, so I'm going to click and drag the upper left-hand corner. I'll hold the Option key down. I've got the Direct Selection tool. Option key down, so I select the whole stroke so I can see all my points. W gets me to the Blend tool, remember? So if I click over here or do a W, I can now use it, wait for the little black dot, and voila. OK, so I'll grab the Direct Selection tool again, and I'll click and drag over here, do a W, go over here, and go over here, and that one's done. Do a letter A with this Direct Selection tool, grab the two inner points, 
do a W for the blend tool, click on that point, and click on that point. I'm not sure if I, whoop, I did get it. I wasn't sure if I got it. Okay, so letter A, grab these two, W for the, for the blend tool, click from here to there. That one's done. One more to go. Letter A for the selection tool, direct selection tool. Uh, do a W for the blend tool. Click on there, click on there, and it's there, done. Okay, now this is a blend, so if I do a command Y, we don't see the stroke that I just got through defining. So let me do a command Y again. So two things need to happen. One, I need to create and uh, expand the uh, outlines here. And then I have to join the points that were subdivided because they're still in pieces. Okay, so we'll go ahead and select the whole thing. And everything is selected in here. And now I want to go to the object drop down menu and select expand. And I don't need to expand the stroke. The fill is fine since I'm, it thinks I'm already working with this stroke. And now I've got my line in the middle. I'm going to get rid of the outside edges. And I'm just double clicking in here to get rid of whatever is selected. First delete gets rid of the point. Second delete gets rid of the rest. That takes care of that. Now I need to join it. So I'll select everything and I can kind of remember where the points are. I have one over here, here. So I'll select those two points here with the, oops, with the direct selection tool. And I'm not going to take any chances, although I suspect they're right on top of each other. But if I do a command option J or control J, op, uh, alt J, I get this dialog window and I can make sure that the points are right on top of each other. And once they do that, I can do a command J or control J on the PC, and that locks those two points together. Now to double check, grab your direct selection tool, click on nothing, and then go back to that point and try moving it out of the way. If you only move one point and the whole line goes with it, you know you got it. And so I'll do an undo. And it really does pay to be as accurate as possible. So I'll just work my way down the line. You can see that while this is selected, there's the end of the line. So I'm selecting that. And again, if chances are it's a good fix because I was right on top of the line when I cut it. But remember, this was blending from this line to this line, and they're intersecting together. So I don't want to take any chances. Uh, like I said before, I'm selecting both that point and the one right underneath it. And I'm going to do a Command Option J and do both and hit OK. And then I can call a Command J for Join. And it's Control J and Alt Command, uh, Control Alt J on a PC, Option Command J on a Mac. OK, so same thing over here. Now, it's, if I click anywhere along here, you can see the whole path lights up, and right in here is where my connection needs to be made. So again, join them in the same spot, hit OK, Command J, those are done. Here's my last one, Command J, do both, and then call Command J. That way I'm sure that they're all just one points. And I don't have to double check them because they're 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 already there, so it's done. Okay, so the letter S is done, and um, you're going to have to size this proportionally to whatever font you have. And um, I'll get into more specifics on how to edit the text, but for now I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to go up here to my lowercase letter S, and I'm just going to go ahead and proportionally put it in there. Command V for paste. And now I'm going to scale it. And again, I'm going to have to scale this again with a lot more accuracy. And so I'm just kind of eyeballing it right now. I'm selecting the direct selection tool. And just so I can see this a little bit better, I think I'll change the color temporarily. So we'll make it uh, hot pink. And 
I'm just going to kind of eyeball this right now. And I'm looking to put this line right between the middle of them. So I'm just kind of, if it gets close in there, that's fine. And it's actually pretty good where it is. And then I'll use my scale tool. And I'm going to change the stroke from down here. And I'm holding the shift key down just to keep the constraint down. Actually, I'm not even holding the shift key down. I'm just clicking straight down. And you can see what I'm talking about in this on the letter S. So that's probably just I'll stay close to the top. And that's enough for me to work with. And while I'm at it, I'll go ahead and click the bottom S. And I'll go to the View drop-down menu and go to Guides and make that into a guide as well, since that one's done. So that one's done. I can come back and modify it later. If I have to make little cuts in here just so that it looks proportionally correct, I can just slice it up. But that's done. And uh, pretty straightforward. I'm going to come back over here and fix this one again. So this one in here, I want it to be a little bit taller. So I'll select that and get my scale tool and from the center I'm just going to hold the shift key down and I, I don't want to I don't want to distort it evenly I want to distort it just straight up and down so if, so that's what you want to do now the other thing you can do is uh, and this is a good way of making some distortions is you can select what you want to distort and double click on the uh, uh, scale tool and then just do a percentage. And this is going to be a non-uniform percentage. So it's only going to schedule in the vertical, uh, scale in the vertical. So I'm going to leave the horizontal at 100. And I'm going to scale this guy over here in the vertical. It's going to slowly get bigger. So I'm going to make it 101. And I'll hit OK. And so that got a little bit bigger. And now if I do a Command D or Control D if you're on a PC, the Mac remembers the last thing you did, or the computer remembers the last thing you did. And Command-D, you just keep on going. And if you overshoot it, then you just do a Command-Z or a Control-Z to undo where you were. And I can see that it's not lining up where I want it to be, so it looks like I need to scale it from the top. So again, with the Scale tool, I'll hold the Option key down, I'll click on that, and then in here is fine. I hit OK. And then I'll just keep on doing a Command D until it gets a little bit past the baseline so I can have a little bit of an overshoot. Uh, although I'm going to have to come back and modify this later. Um, anyway, the uh, then it's just a matter of, of selecting the stroke that you want on this. And uh, you can pull it back a little bit. Uh, you got to be a little careful that you don't go too crazy because eventually the inner stroke starts to fold back on itself. So there is a limit to what you can do in terms of how big you want it. But in our particular case, uh, I think I only want to modify it fairly small. So, uh, but for now, I'm going to leave it at one point. I'll come back and worry about the fine tuning of the letter when I'm done with the rest of the alphabet. So in the next movie, we're going to do the letter P, R, and B. And it's a lot easier to do all three of those at the same time. And while we're here in the letter R, you can see that the stroke in here kind of folds further below. And this one goes further behind. That causes some unique problems. It takes a little bit more time to sort that out. But this is probably going to be the hardest letter to do. Everything else is just pretty straightforward. It, it's, uh, it's easy peasy. It's just a matter of getting it done. Okay, so we'll catch up with you in the next movie.